When my dad was in his late 60s, he cut back from work and started only doing about one or two days a month. His measurements used to be 100, 100, 100. 100 centimeter chest, 100 centimeter waist, and 100 centimeter hips. To top it off, he weighed about 100 kilos and he called it the quadruple ton. He was pretty proud of it for a little while, but at some point he decided to try to be a little less cylindrical. He started changing his diet and was losing weight quite quickly, but I knew it was important for him to also do more exercise so that he could improve his health more generally. I'd been learning more about health and exercise psychology, so I got him a Fitbit for Christmas. After all, I'd learned self-monitoring and goal setting were really important for promoting exercise and adherence. A Fitbit as a Christmas present is a bit like your girlfriend ordering you a Happy Meal at Macca's. Sure, you get a fun toy, but what she's really saying is, hey, you're a bit fat. With Dad, I kind of didn't care. I thought I was doing what was best for his health, right? I knew a Fitbit was the best way of improving physical activity. A few months later, Dad dropped off my Fitbit leaderboard and I asked him what happened. He hadn't checked the Fitbit at all the whole time. Apparently, he didn't like the frowny face he kept giving him, so he kept it in his pocket without checking it. Finally, it went through the washing machine one too many times and the frowny face was all gone. So what went wrong? What happened to control theory? What happened to the high performance cycle? The problem is, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Now, one common approach to this dilemma is to say, well, it just depends on the person. If it only depended on the person, science couldn't offer us any useful prediction. As an example, take homeopathy. Homeopathy proposes that remedies that are more powerful the more you dilute them. Here's a quick quote from Wikipedia. A popular homeopathic treatment for the flu is a 200C dilution of duck liver, marketed under the name Ocelococcinum. As there are only about 10 to the 80 atoms in the entire observable universe, a dilution of one molecule in the observable universe would be about 40C. Ocelococcinum would thus require 10 to the power of 320 more universes to simply have one molecule in the final substance. So yeah, you might say homeopathy works for some people. It's just kind of the air guitar for medicine. Science tells us that homeopathic remedies are, surprise, no better than placebo controls in randomized studies. So instead of depending on the person, we instead need to consider whether the findings of our studies are generalizable to our client. For example, Mitchie and colleagues used healthy adults, which means they excluded children, older people, and those with health problems. As a result, we can't assume the same results will happen in those populations. Instead, what we need to do is find a meta-analysis specific to my dad. Let's hop onto Google Scholar. A good way to find articles is to enter one or two words for each of the following. Who's the participant? What's the intervention? What are the comparisons? And what's the outcome we're looking for? Participants, intervention, comparison, and outcome are known by the acronym PICO. And when we're looking for something using Google Scholar, it's good to use PICO as our search strategy. So let's do one for the situation with my dad. Being over 60 and retired, I could type in older adults as the participant group. The interventions I'm looking for are BCTs, so I'll put that in next. Technically, comparison describes what the BCTs are compared to, but for today, we know meta-analyses are the highest level of evidence, and they often compare BCTs to other BCTs. So let's use meta-analysis as our keyword. Finally, the outcome we want is physical activity, so let's put that last. Here, the first study is about obesity, which might be okay given Dad's BMI, but the second one looks perfect. Which behavior change techniques are most effective in increasing older adults' self-efficacy and physical activity behavior A systematic review? French and colleagues found 25 studies using BCTs to promote exercise in older adults. Most of these were RCTs, with a handful using either pre, post, or non-randomized trials. This is important because interventions allow us to determine causality much better than observational research. The average age for the participants in the studies was about 69, which was definitely in the right ballpark for my dad. Even though most of the sample were female, there was a balance of both men and women, with about 25% of people being male. In total, the studies they combined had around 6,000 participants. This means we're much more likely to find interesting, robust results than any single randomized trial. Now the results here supported my dad's experience with the Fitbit. Many of the strategies that worked in healthy adults actually reduced both self-efficacy and physical activity in older adults. 
Older adults did not respond well when the intervention provided information about what other people were doing. They didn't appear to like being compared to other people. French and colleagues argued that many older people may find this a bit demoralizing. Goal setting and self-monitoring actually reduced older people's adherence and self-efficacy. The same thing happened when they got feedback about their performance or when the study tried to plan social support for them to be active. Coping plans, which as we discussed elsewhere are really helpful for adults, tended to reduce self-efficacy and adherence amongst older adults. So behaviour change techniques that work for middle-aged adult population don't work for older adults anymore. French and colleagues put forward a few reasons why. First of all, the self-regulatory processes used in control theory involve a lot of executive control, and as adults get older, they tend to have poorer performance in tasks that need this skill. French and colleagues suggest that this makes it harder to create plans with the right set of actions in the most efficient order. To support this idea, studies have found that people with lower executive function tend to create poorer action plans or implementation intentions. Since control theory interventions infer some self-directed planning, French and colleagues argue that they're less suited to older adults. Alternatively, it could be that the barriers to exercise are different for older adults than they are for young adults or middle-aged people. Many BCTs are about translating motivation into action. They're about helping people fit more physical activity into their lives by overcoming competing demands, like going to work or raising a family. Most older adults have fewer of these competing demands on their time. Their kids have left the nest and many have retired from work. As a result, intentions appear to be more closely related to behaviour for older people. And this means the focus should be on fostering intentions. Finally, the motivating factors that create these intentions are likely to be different for older people. French and colleagues suggest they're less motivated by long-term benefits like improved health. Instead, they're more likely to be focused on positive emotions and a sense of meaning. This means fun social activities may be more salient than those that are focused on squeezing exercise into a busy lifestyle. Taking your Fitbit for a walk might be the least fun and social way of getting extra physical activity. So with that in mind, what did work for older adults? Well, if you're going to track something, heart rate seems to be the best thing. Heart rate monitors allow people to track their effort in a way that isn't compared to others. They can help people feel safer when the risk of heart disease is a bit higher as well. Another strategy that worked was having someone similar lead the program. So as discussed elsewhere, seeing other people succeed may help them feel like it's possible. Seeing similar others do well can give you proof that it can be done. For example, joining a walking group or a fitness class led by someone your own age may help give you a sense of vicarious success. Otherwise, it may depend on whether the client lacks confidence or importance. For those with lower confidence, gradually increasing goals increase self-efficacy, and so did information on when and where to exercise, conversations about past successes, strategies to generalise those successes to other domains, and motivational interviewing more generally. For those with already high confidence, Rewards increased physical activity, and so did learning to problem solve when faced with barriers. So how does all of this circle back to my dad? Well, needless to say, he ditched the Fitbit. But he used to ride his bike around the city. So without using the word generalization, he decided to generalize that to other areas. He'd ride over to see me, or we'd go for a ride together. And he started riding with a group of older adults. And since that point, he's been out on his bike at least twice a week. There's no goals, no action plans, no focus on future health. Instead, he's doing what he finds social, enjoyable, and meaningful to him. Sure, it depends a little bit on what he likes, but it's also consistent with the evidence for people his age. And that's the biggest lesson from all of this. Yes, problems can occur when you use the same BCTs for all clients. If all you have is a hammer, that doesn't mean you should try to drink coffee with it. Alternatively, you shouldn't just do what you think is best for the client without looking at the evidence. Instead, find the highest level of evidence you can that matches this particular client and use that to inform your treatment. If you have a healthy adult trying to change their diet, then yes, use self-monitoring with goal setting and action plans. But if you have an older adult trying for more physical activity, then find them similar others who can model realistic exercises. And if your client's trying to prevent the flu, get them a vaccine, not some diluted duck liver.